Hi there. Wee. <laughs> Hi, it's Polly here. Wee. <sighs> You're in Game Central. Okay, look. Um, I was sent um, a game, um, not by the publishers, by a fan of it. Um, so thank you very much. This is Masks a New Generation. Um, I will give you a caveat here. I despise the um, superhero genre. I really do. I don't understand it. I'm an old black and white comics writer. I just don't get it. However, as a game, this is an interesting piece of work. It's a good one. Um, so, Masks. Right. Masks uses, at its core, a very simple system. It's a 2d6 system. You're effectively rolling a 7 higher for a result. You have characteristics, which they call labels, which give you a bonus to that uh, roll. Now, the thing with Masks is, okay, so there is a game, uh, the hero system sort of dominated the superhero game scene for a long time. Uh, the hero system is massively over complex. Um, in its defense, it's incredibly, um, it's a very malleable game system. So if you wanted to run something that was just kind of like Bruce Lee style martial artists, you could do it. If you wanted to do out and out superheroes, you could do it. You could do anything you want with it. This is entirely superheroes of a sort of a accepted comic book level of power. Now, what they've done is they've set up an imaginary city and they've said that you are new generation heroes in a world where there have been generations of heroes. So there's like Golden Age, Silver Age and so on. So you are essentially um, like a third generation of superheroes. There's been all the classic 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s kind of characters and you're the new kids on the block. So you're starting off as teens. So um, thematically, the leap off of this is things like Teen Titans. I would suggest the cartoon rather than the comics. But, um, and also things like, you know, X-Men or something. Yeah, we're troubled teens, man. We've got powers, but yeah, you know, off we go. So, you are in a city which has uh, an established set of kind of law and order mechanisms that try and handle supervillains where there actually are, you know, supervillains, but where there's older generation heroes who are out there who can serve as mentors and as guides. Now, what you do for the characters is they've got a fairly limited array of characteristics. They call them labels and they are things like, you know, danger and mundane. They've got quite funny names. So danger is how dangerous do people perceive you to be? Um, and uh, there's other ones for how alien do they perceive you to be and so on. And you when you're setting up a character, you have to choose from what they call playbooks. Now inside this fairly compact little volume here, they have different, they call them playbooks for the different types of character. So here is the outsider. The outsider is the alien that's come from somewhere else and they've got, you know, wacky powers. So, you know, Starfire from Teen Titans, <laughs> or the one everybody hated in Deadpool 2. So what these things do is they give you some suggestions as to your look they give you a list of abilities that that character can have. You kind of usually tick like one you, and then, oh, my guy's got gravity control or my one can like, you know, um, um, limitedly shift back and forth in time a couple of seconds or my person is in, incredibly fast or massively strong or, you know, this person can control light, whatever. Um, it gives you a, a, a range of labels and what your starting range is for that playbook and you can add a couple of points freely to yourself. Now there are a series of different conditions your character can have. You can be, or what is it, you can be uh, afraid, angry, guilty, hopeless, insecure. Now these each affect your roles during the game. You gain conditions as stuff happens to you. To design a character you cook up some backstory stuff, when our team first came together, what your relationships are, and there's a thing called influence. You can nominate characters that have influence over you. Now these could be a mentor that you go and see, but you can actually have, you know, lovers or other characters that have influence over you. You nominate that. Now, it's a mechanism we'll get, oh, so what, what happens with your influence is that if someone who has influence over you, a sec effectively does something that tells you that you should view yourself in a different way. You decide whether you accept 
that that person has influence over you or not. If you accept it, then your label will change depending on how this person has kind of pushed you. So you really respect that girl. She's amazing. She's just, you know, she's got huge influence in you, but she's seen you revealed as this kind of weird alien thing with all these powers and she runs fleeing from you and yells at you that you're nothing but a monster, a monster, a monster. Do you accept that she's got influence over you or not? If yes, then the label, which is um, freak, is going to go up. You say, all right, I, I, I'm accepting that influence. You now see yourself as more freakish. That's not necessarily a bad thing because all of these things add to roles. If you are there doing um, combat, your danger is actually the bonus to the role. If you're using certain powers that rely on your, your freakishness, your alien monstrous nature, then that will add to it. But nice little mechanism. So quite simple generation really now each of these playbooks also has a guides to optional moves and things that you can do and there's a thing called moment of truth uh, each different character type has a moment of truth that can happen during play where they realize something incredibly deep and amazing about themselves yes I'm a freak but you know I accept it or I'm truly a monster and yeah I'll act like a monster or um, I'm really here to be the savior of these people when during role play an opportunity for that finally comes up that character gets a moment of truth and what happens is for this next little scene they kind of succeed at everything they do in it because yahoo they've got the spotlight and they come to this amazing arrangement and they kind of can then move into further character development so you know again because you're supposed to be teenagers that are like you know not sure about your powers the powers are also divided up because you are teens that aren't really very good at this stuff so what you have is a series of moves you can do the role play is supposed to effectively move you to points when these very specific moves can be triggered which are things that you roll for and the umpire kind of has to watch for that so when you finally decide you're going to face someone and fight them when you're right so you're doing a um a combat move you're you're, you're doing a um face the danger get stuck into it move yeah yeah Oh, but I want to use my super gravity powers to beat him up. So it's all right. Well, the umpire's got a call then. Well, because there's another move, which is for using your powers. It's like, well, if it's direct confrontation with the person or whatever, it's going to be the combat move. Using the powers is when you're trying to do something incredibly unusual using those powers. So there are other moves which are used for defending people, for provoking people, for supporting people. Um, and each of those labels contributes to them. Now, to, to add to that sort of guys that they've got of, you know, Teen Titans, team play kind of thing, you have a pool of team, these team resources, and these are dice roll bonuses that you can give to someone for achieving their tasks. But you can't, oh, actually you can give them to yourself you can selfishly take them and just give them to yourself. However, you have to basically explain to people how taking this is kind of selfish and it does actually piss off other people in the team. Um, but what you can do is you can take points and you can give it to someone provided your character is actually in a position to help. So this guy's having a fight with this person. All right, I'm going to pitch in and help him. All right, you can give him some team points. Or this guy's trying to persuade someone. All right, well, I'm going to come in. And I'm going to also back him up. Yeah, yeah, I saw that happen. I'm going to tell him my side of the story as well. All right, I'm giving him a team point. So some resource management there to work on. Now, once you've had a moment of truth and so on and have become a bit more mature, and as the character goes on, there are more mature versions of these same rules. Because when you use your powers as a teenager, sort of thing you're not too sure about how to use them you're not very good at controlling them you're flailing about whatever the more adult one that the very mature heroes use yes they definitely powerfully scientifically and precisely use their powers so you don't start being able to use that you have to grow into it so a very nice idea um and each of these playbooks has special moves for these particular types of character and um uh, you can also borrow moves from other people's playbooks and so it doesn't mold itself to lesser levels of power or different settings at all. If you were a big fan of um, Venture Brothers, for instance, or Mystery Man, and you wanted to play sort of a way lower powered thing, more comedic, you could massage this game down to that, but that isn't what this is for. 
as something that emulates um, a genre, I think this is an excellent piece of work. It emulates it without paperwork, without deeply worrying about character design. It's more about just concept. And the role play, again, it doesn't worry about Niggle's precise number of dice, precise number of points, shielding, whatever. It's like the umpire adjudicates, given what's going on, this person's facing the danger, they've made a good role, they can pick two effects on the opponent from this list. Um, you must now take a blow because this happened. Roll to see how well you resist the blow. Did you do it well or badly? You did it badly, all right. Some of these effects come in you. You are now, you know, hurt and you are now ashamed because you let down the team and these affect your, your roles. Or you have to go unconscious and miss the next scene or what have you. So look, um, I think superhero-wise, this is a really good choice because it's easy to get into. You could sit some players down, hey, I want to run a superhero thing, and they can pour through this, find the kind of kind of character concept they want from amongst the playbooks, and I think you could be playing within 10 minutes, uh, which is a huge bonus over most other superhero games where character design becomes long and tedious. Um, I think looking at this, the play is going to be uh, quite fast and quite flowy. It's also got mechanisms in there designed to effectively simulate teen angst, wear attacks, um, people flashing out in fury, <laughs> people being failed, people running to their mentors, um, people taunting each other, provoking um, provoking bad guys so that they make a mistake. Um, all these sorts of cool things from these sorts of tropes are in there. So this can have, and of course I have a little bit of a kind of comedic level to it as well. You can run that sort of um, Teen Titan cartoon sort of thing. Uh, team dynamics are in there, interpersonal relations. That's that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of meaty goodness in a relatively thin volume. Um, and I mean a thin volume. It's actually, um, I mean, it's beautifully illustrated. But the actual rule section is is that. The rest is the playbooks and then some adventures and just some umpiring guidelines on how to run a world for this. So again, you could just pick this up and you could read this, you know, over a few hours in an afternoon. You will have all the know-how to run the game. As opposed, unfortunately, with something like Heroes where you are going to have to study this thing because the players, if they have a greater knowledge of the ins and outs of the game, are going to make your life hell. Um, so look, excellent choice. If you wanted to do a um, kind of a X Mini Teen Titans teenage superhero team um, set of adventures, um, yeah, I would really recommend Masks. It's a good piece of work. Um, Magpie, um, that good, pretty robust two D six thing, and heavily engages people in team play and effectively character character building. Go out, have a look at it, and uh, enjoy. Keep playing, people. Cheers.